begins again. What's up everyone? Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem, baby. We are going to have the unveil of Hollywood and China Dow's new promo, so be on the lookout for that today over on YouTube and on Facebook. We have a lot of news. We have a lot of good news today. You know, many people, I actually get it all the time, send in, you know, the HA are always in the news. Well, yeah, they're in the news, so I cover it. But there is a good story about them today in the show. I always try to make sure I am fair in what I try to cover on this show. So, it has to do with a lemonade stand and raising money for kids. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Also, we got some good conversation topics coming up. I guess the media in Missouri is throwing their nuts up in the air and celebrating somebody dying because he didn't wear a helmet after the helmet law passed i've never ever seen something like it one person dies because he didn't have a helmet and next thing you know oh that law is bad you shouldn't have signed it what is actually wrong with these people it's actually disgusting the way they act. But hey, we know how the media is. We especially know how the media is towards bikers. So it shouldn't really surprise us at all. After all, they tried to blame the Hells Angels for starting the damn riots in Minneapolis. That's how far they will go in their fake news reporting. And they wonder why people do not trust them it's like where the hell do you get your journalistic degree from because you need to get rid of that damn program that's why i like citizen journalist that is the original basis of this country in the first amendment was citizen journalist not these corporate hacks i never thought i would see the day when editors and producers, directors would tell anchors and journalists what to say through their earpiece. And they wonder why this country is so polarized. Sad state of affairs. Sad state. But we do got the good news and I'm going to make sure that gets out because a lot of times they don't want it out there. You know, they might do a couple paragraphs and that's it. That's good. It is better for their sales to demonize bikers and motorcycle clubs because they know that crap sells. Just look at the TV shows. They were some of the highest rated programs on cable TV. Think about that for a minute. The highest rated. And most of those ratings probably came from bikers. <laughs> I think people just like watching the motorcycles and, you know, not all the drama, even though it had a lot of good, you know, plot lines and stuff. But there's a subject that I wanted to cover in my monologue today because I've been getting a lot of emails on this one. And everybody knows I don't like talking about MC protocol, any of that crap. I always refer them to somebody else, BD or whoever has the experience because quite, per you know, honestly, I don't like the headaches, especially after that one email. My God, if you haven't heard about that email, about the guy getting beat up, his colors taken, calling me a propagandist, and he's going to sue this, call the cops that. Yeah, I don't need the damn headaches, man. So bravo for you guys that are doing protocol videos because I, you know, I knew. I guess I'm getting old, man. I'm getting grumpy in my old age where I'm always looking at it. Well, where the hell is your common sense at? If you don't have common sense, why are you even throwing a damn patch on? I think 
I do. I think it's a good question that needs to be answered. I have, you know, ever since I've been doing the radio show and then, you know, put a couple of the videos on YouTube, started that station up, I have never seen so much, how can I say it, the people that don't have common sense. Let's just put it straight up. I'm like, damn, man, how do they even be riding their motorcycles? That's dangerous in itself. And now they want to ride with a club that they know nothing about. They just throw on patches. But one of the things I do like about the lifestyle, that has to be riding clubs. I believe wholeheartedly in riding clubs. And the reason is they're not involved in the politics of what's going on in the scene. Now, yes, there's different protocols all over the country regarding riding clubs. But most of the time, MCs really don't care about you. You know, especially if you got that single patch on, you got no rockers, no territory, none of that crap on that patch. They usually say they'd leave you alone. Which is actually the main reason for a riding club is to get together. Have your brotherhood and ride. Riding is the biggest part of a riding club. <laughs> That's the name. There's a lot out there. You know, the biggest one is Hog. Now, I bust on them all the time, but it's a riding club because their interest is revolve around Harley Davidsons. They're Harley Davidson owners. They want to ride with people that have Harley Davidsons. And that's really a big riding club. Of course, you know, it's localized at the dealership level, but that's all over the damn world. You see people with the hog patch all over the place. Do MCs give them problems? No. No. Just like you have clubs that are sponsored by other manufacturers or they're sponsored by nonprofit organizations. You got the uh, Knights of Columbus. You got, uh, you even got the Masons one. Now, with the Masons one, uh, the Widow Sons, they got the Rockers. I think that's the reason why they get the problems uh, that they do in some part of the country is with the Rockers, you're in a whole different type of deal. Again, you're calling some trouble onto you. Now, one piece patch is a lot different. Like I said, uh, if I was going to go to a riding club, it'd have to be a one piece, not say anything on it except for the name, maybe your slogan, and that would be it. Because you don't want the problems anymore. I know at my age, I don't need the problems. I really don't. Uh, I've been there, done it. I've seen uh, some of the bad stuff. I've seen some of the good stuff. Lost a lot of guys, uh, you know, motorcycle accidents, this and that. And that can happen in the riding club, motorcycle accidents. But I'm talking it was a whole different lifestyle that kept me away from home, my family. It's just not me because I'm turning, what, 47 years old. I'm almost 50. Got a lot of other stuff that I like doing. So I can't spend that amount of time with an MC. A riding club, on the other hand, good stuff. Because you it, it's not the commitment that you would need in an MC. Most MCs, they're following, you know, they fall under the support club realm. Because, be quite honest, a lot of clubs, you're not on the fence, man. You're on one side or the other. I don't care what people have to say. It's one or the other when you want to go traditional MC. Now, that's not saying that you got these other clubs that go out there throw under damn patches, uh, join the law-abiding uh, uh, 
uh, what is that, Law Abiding Motorcycle Clubs Association or some crap like that. It's their COC uh, equivalent. Or you got people that just ride with cop clubs and stuff, something I've never believed in. So I always say to myself, well, why didn't you guys just go join a riding club, man? Have fun. Live the, the lifestyle the way it used to be. That's the way it used to be, guys. The riding club, there's, you're not taking a step down. Because a lot of people say, well, if you ain't in a motorcycle club, you ain't nothing. Man, I know some hardcore riding clubs out there that stick together. And I think the riding clubs I kind of like, and I'm not, you know, trying to be quirky about, you know, bringing up this movie. And, I, and Black Dragon actually had a real big part in it was the Biker Boys one. You had a mix of bikes, you know, you had mostly uh, rockets in that one, but you had a mix of bikes. It didn't matter what you rode as long as you rode. And you had the parties, you had everything. Now, a lot of people say, well, if you're acting like that, you're acting like a motorcycle club. I beg to differ. You're partying and you're riding. You're not out there trying to claim territory. You're not trying to get in the middle of anything. You got a single patch on. It has nothing on there. Now, a lot of clubs, you know, riding clubs are going to put on the RC which I don't think there's any, it, it's not necessary, if you ask me, to put on RC. Who cares? You know you're a riding club. And when you talk to other people, you know, you, know, you tell them you're a riding club. And some of these riding clubs, even though, you know what, <laughs> I still can't put that aside, women joining clubs. But a lot of riding clubs have women riders. I wouldn't join one. Because in the back of my head, I'm still saying, you know what, she might get stupid, uh, start something in a bar, next thing you're involved, you got your, you know, riding club patch on, and next year you're a target and you get involved in all the po political crap. But there are a lot of those clubs out there. One uh, club, and I consider them a riding club, I don't consider them a MC, is BACA. That is an awesome organization right there. We all know how good BACA is and how they come to the aid of abused children. That's a freaking awesome riding club right there. That is what I would consider something cool. None of them go into the politics. None of them are asking to do this or that. They just want to ride. Now, how would you handle a situation if you were approached by a one percenter? Be straight up and honest, man. Be a man. Hey, we're a riding club. We have nothing to do with this and that. You know? And then they invite you to a party. Okay, go to your party. Have fun. Just don't put no support stuff on you. Because as soon as you put that support stuff on your RC, then it's a whole different ball game, if you ask me. Just keep it off you and just ride and enjoy uh, what you're doing. You'll see a lot of riding clubs going to these big rallies. They'll ride up the Sturges together. They'll bring their wives, girlfriends, whatever, and just have a good time. Now, I don't know how the MC color policy affects them with bars and stuff. I know around where I'm at, there's really not a problem with it. Unless there's the Rockers. Then you'll have a no club color policy. But a lot of times, I really, again, I don't know how it affects everybody else over there. Maybe you guys can tell me in your area, do bars let riding club members in? And another thing with riding clubs is it don't take over your whole life. Because let's be honest, with an MC, it, it, you got obligations you got to take care of. If you got to be here or be there, you got to be here or there. With the riding club, it's really work, then your family, then your riding club. And I know a lot of MCs say that stuff, but that just ain't true. Uh, I like being real. There's always pressure put on you like mandatory runs. 
you got to be there. Well, we're telling you two, three weeks out, so take off of work. Here you are missing a day of work. With the writing club, it ain't like that. Hey, if you can't do the event, we understand. You got to work, or you got to go to a kid's graduation, or you got a kid's birthday party. You don't have the responsibility and you don't have to feel bad that you can't attend. Maybe you want to, but you just can't. That is a bona fide writing club. You don't see uh, Hog or some of the other big writing clubs declaring uh, mandatories, do you? No. If you can make it, great. If not, you can't. At the same time, I would say that you want to put every effort in to go on the rides. Now, if you're up north, you maybe get six good months of riding season. Maybe. Like right now, it is starting to get butt cold out there. And I don't care how much you guys make fun of me, but I hate the cold weather riding. If I have to, uh, dude, I go full gear, man. Full helmets, the whole nine yards. I'm like bundled up like a freaking, you know, in the snowmobile suits and all that stuff. I, I'm i just old, man, and it gets right into my bones now. But you only got six months of riding season, and you want to put as many miles as you can on the motorcycles, so make the events if you can. You know, really try hard, but... Riding clubs ain't going to hold you to the same standard that MCs are. That's why I'm really supportive of RCs. I Personally, I don't see the obsession. Obsession, my fault. I'm trying to hide that Chicago accent. See, I talk real weird. I get this Italian accent to me and I because it's real pronounced. So I got to try to get rid of that. Anyway, it's hard to understand on the show if I start talking that way. My wife makes fun of me all that time. Well, you're a totally different person on this show. <laughs> but you talk like a day ago. When you, whatever. Uh, anyway, I am really behind RCs because I don't understand why people think they have to ride in an MC club. Is it because of the image? You don't need a three-piece patch to have an image, man. This whole lifestyle was supposed to be about riding, having fun, partying, living to the, you know, living on the edge, looking at that sucker and jumping down. That's what it was supposed to be all about. You can have, even if you're an RC guy, you'd have brothers that are in clubs. You just can't do the responsibility that they do. And you don't want the politics. You want this whole thing based around riding, having fun, going on long rides, partying. You don't want it based on politics. One of the things I see on the internet is these sites that, you know, the sites that uh, they're afraid to say who they are, but they'll give all kinds of freaking advice out, or they're bashing on this one, bashing on that one. They're sites that have freaking guys that have been three or four clubs, and they're hiding behind that thing, and they got people following them, thinking that they're uh, talking. Boy, would people freak out, because I've seen some one percenters on these sites. They freak out to find out who's behind them. They'll be like, damn, I felt stupid following this idiot. Here he was, three or four freaking clubs, and he's talking crap about the clubs he was in. But anyway, you get them type of freaking guys talking crap about RCs. What do you care? What do you care what other people think if you're wearing a one-piece patch or a three-piece patch? You're still a man, so say one of these idiots run off the mouth, Oh, that's just like anything, dude. Knock them on their ass. You don't need a three-piece patch. You got to be a man before you anything. So get rid of that I need to be in a club image. You're better off joining a riding club nowadays. 
Because quite frankly, the politics is way out of control. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do it anymore. No sir weary. No sirree. I wouldn't want to do it anymore. Not at my age, and I know a lot of other people, their priorities are work and family. And they're not going to put themselves through it. It's a whole different breed. And I'm, you know what? I'm actually going to say they're a smarter breed than my generation. Because a lot of us were hustlers. We did a lot of stuff that took away from the family, time, the whole nine yards. Where this new generation says, hey, wait a second, man. I love being this, but it ain't my entire life I got other things that I want to do say you know yeah riding the motorcycle is a big part of my life but also a big part of my life is my truck my car raising a household I got other hobbies to do it just doesn't define you once you let something define you that's the only thing you concentrate on. I always say being a biker is multitasking. Because you got this one thing in the back of your mind. You're living it every day. You want to get on that bike and just go. But then your other, then the reality hits and say, hey, <laughs> you got other responsibilities, dude. But don't take me wrong. I'm not trying to say that being an MC is all bad. I just wanted to point out some of the difference, you know, because I got a moto vlog coming up on Saturday because I told you guys I'd be moto vlogging. I'm trying to get it more in before the winter time. And we're going to talk more about RCs, how to set them up maybe, uh, the different types of stuff you want to look for, the whole nine yards. So that's going to be a moto vlog coming up this Saturday. It'll be over on YouTube and on, uh, what is it, uh, Facebook. But we're going to debut Hollywood and China Dow's uh, intro. I think you're going to like it. Don't forget, we got our YouTube channel over there. Subscribe. You guys are the ones that wanted it over there because I was just going to put it on Spotify and that. But we uh, did the channel, so get over there and make sure, make sure to subscribe and share it. Every uh, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we're over there in the chat rooms getting movie over there, baby. Uh, but let's go through this uh, little break, and then we're going to hit the biker news for today. Hey guys, Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to baggersyndicatecycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Akron Beacon Journal, this is what I was telling you about. Always have bad news going on for the Hells Angels, but this is a good one. Lemonade stand for childhood cancer coming to Akron by Sean McDonald. An annual lemonade stand that raises money for children battling cancer is coming to a local Hells Angels club this year. Kylie's Lemonade Stand helps raise money each year for families staying at the Ronald McDonald House of Akron with children who are battling cancer. If you're over on Facebook watching this, I'm going to have a donate link to St. Jude's. Make sure you donate something. Two, three, four, five dollars. It goes through Facebook and, you know, the kids get their money. And I actually do that every video over on Facebook. It's either Wounded Warrior, St. Jude's, or Suicide Prevention, Epilepsy Foundation, that type of stuff. Uh, anyway... The fundraiser, which usually is held in Streetsboro, will take place this year in Akron. Brady Taylor said the Akron Hells Angels Club volunteered space this year to host the 7th annual event. And here the feds are always talking about clubs being bad. 
Taylor said the lemonade stand started after her daughter Kylie's two cousins, Rylan and Jocelyn, were diagnosed with brain cancer. Taylor said the brother and sister were diagnosed in uh, 2011 and 12 and are now cancer-free. God bless. Rock and roll, man. That's awesome to hear. She said the Ronald McDonald House was amazing with helping out the family, which inspired the family to organize the stand each year. The event will take place from noon to 4, Sunday, September 13th. Rather than selling lemonade and cookies for a fixed price, patrons can choose their donation, Tadler said. And make sure you give good donations if you're giving this or going to this, guys and gals. Uh, the club is at, and this is where it's going to be held, at 560 North Howard Street in Akron. If you guys go... Let me know. Send some pictures. It'd be cool to show it off. Taylor said they'll also hold raffles for gift cards and other items donated before the stand opens up. Since the fundraising started, she said they've raised close to $18,000. Rock and roll. Uh, Tyler said they've donated to 17 families so far. Part of the proceeds also go to making goodie bags each Christmas for uh, children uh, battling cancer. Last year, 50 bags were given uh, to the children. Uh, you can go on Facebook.com uh, backslash uh, Kyle's uh, Lemonade Stand. That can give you the event info, but it will be uh, hosted by the Hell's Angels out in Akron. Good stuff right there. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier, man, uh, about the media going crazy. Uh, a week after New Helmet Law, Missouri biker killed while not wearing one. This by WDAF. You see the title of that one? Uh, it's like, really, one person has died. How many people died in Sturges? But because they just passed this helmet law where you'd have your freedom to choose. Now, personally, I choose whenever possible to wear a helmet. I used to not be like that, but when I seen some of these uh, heads, you know, splattered on the ground, I was like, yeah, it only happened at 10, 15 miles an hour. Yeah, I'm wearing my helmet. Uh, Kansas City police are investigating the fatal motorcycle crash that happened on Friday night. Just after 10.30 p.m. Friday night, KCBD investigators met Missouri Highway Patrol troopers on the ramp from Cookingham Road to northbound I-435 to investigate a crash. The rider of a red and black Harley Davidson motorcycle was on the ramp from Cookingham Road attempting to head northbound on 435. For some reason, the driver went off the road and the driver was ejected from the motorcycle. And they always put this. The rider who was not wearing a helmet was taken to the hospital where he died of his injuries. No victim identification is available currently. This is the 73rd fatal crash this year and the first of the Labor Day weekend. But you notice the title again. A week after the new helmet law. They didn't talk about the incident. No, they wanted to put that on there to get some clickbait. Anyway, let's go overseas. Yes, again, as I always say, acting a fool over there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, guys. Uh, Lewis Ham shooting second man Albert De Florina dies after an alleged bikey shootout. Uh, let's see if this is uh, even going to work here. You know, let's see. Continue watching. No, don't work. Go figure. A uh, second man has died following a deadly targeted shooting in Sydney's inner west last week that is believed to have links to notorious motorcycle gangs. Ex-bikey Albert Rick De, uh, De Florino, 55, died in hospital after suffering a gunshot wound to the head. He was rushed to the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in critical condition after being found inside his home. Another man, uh, 36, died on the way to the hospital after shocked neighbors found the bloodied man on Henry Street just after 1. The circumstances surrounding the incident are being investigated. It is believed the pair have links to outlaw motorcycle gangs. On Saturday, reports emerged that the fatal incident, which uh, would be treated as a bikey shootout, 
with specialist police called in to investigate. Uh, De La Florino is the founder of the St. Michael Christian Brothers Fight Club. Oh, Fight Club. Although initial reports indicated the younger man had been stabbed, police later confirmed he had been shot. How do you miss that? Several police vehicles, the dog squad, and uh, emergency services were called to the scene. Uh, they released a statement saying officers from Inner West Police Area Command have established a crime scene and are investigating the circumstances. They do not have uh, the clubs that are supposedly, supposedly, allegedly involved. Now let's go over to stuff. Yeah, they call it stuff out of New Zealand. And it's two different countries. Remember that. They always bust on me for that. Comentero trial secrets and pretending used to the disguised offending, Crown says. Uh, the president of the Comentero Motorcycle Club. Uh, oh, we already covered this one, man. This is just a different one. So we'll go over something else. Uh, from Biker Dad, ride plan for honor law enforcement at the USS Alabama, baby. Let's go and listen in. And members of the Thin Blue Line meet behind Mobile Police Headquarters for the first unity ride. As we, as a community, uh, fellowship with one another, sit down at the table, break bread, have conversations, we realize that we have more in common than, than we don't. With recent protests in Mobile, the chief says everyone from police officers to the mayor and public safety director have tried to meet with people in the last month and move the community forward. Just sitting down and just having real relationship has allowed us to, to kind of, as we deal with the crisis of the protest, find some common ground that, that we can work from to try to make things better in our community. The Unity Ride, a joint effort between Mobile's Police Department, WKRG News 5 Biker Dad Chris Bast, and Mobile Bay Harley Davidson. We don't care what your color is or whatever anything is. We just care about riding. They hope to also send a positive message with this short ride around Mobile. To celebrate the things that unite us rather than to dwell on the things that divide us. They have a lot more That was common, Biker Dad, that was Chris. two wheels and the road. Chad Petrie, WKRG News 5. Okay. Uh, I, I believe it's Friday, this coming Friday, from the USS Alabama to honor local law enforcement. The Black, Back to Blue Ride is scheduled for 6 o'clock in the evening. Organizers say this is not a political event, according to the events page. Do not come with any political flags or banners, no Trump or anti-BLM uh, material of any sort. The organizers say all are welcome, calling all bikers black, white, brown, yellow, all religions, creeds, and diverse backgrounds. All types of bikes are also welcome. If you'd respect our law enforcement agencies and want to show you that support, uh, please join together and fly your American and blue flags. And what better day to do it on a 9 11? Yeah, the 9 11's coming up. Huh. Okay! Here we go to Corey Graff's Wall of Shame by TheAdvocate.com. Lafayette police officer on leave. Two others pulled after video of teens aggressive arrest by Megan Wyatt. One Lafayette police officer has been placed on administrative leave and two others have been pulled from regular patrol following an aggressive arrest of a juvenile that was captured on at least four bystanders' videos. Interim Police Chief Scott Morgan has ordered an immediate investigation after viewing video footage of the incident that happened Saturday in the parking lot of a bowling alley, according to a Sunday statement. In one video, a police officer appears to punch a young man who activists say is a black 16-year-old while other officers pin him to the ground. You know what? I wonder here. Just the question, when are you going to start showing white boys getting messed with by cops? Neither the officers nor the juvenile have been identified by officials. Uh, let's see if this is a... There he is, punching him. Yeah, this is kind of out of line right here, baby. The officer's punching the crap out of him. He's on his stomach, and cops are wondering why... They're like, you know, wonder why there's protests. They just, even though he was aggressive, they got all kinds of cops right there. 
They didn't need to punch the priest. Jesus Christ. Uh, the teen was arrested in books on counts of interference, resistant arrest, and battery of an officer. I didn't see and hit him, but there's probably more video to this. Uh, the teen was released to his parents soon after the arrest. Jamal Taylor, a community activist with the group known as The Village, said he's concerned by the bold and bogus accusations and by what he's seen on multiple bystanders' video. Quote, I saw a police officer attack a 16-year-old child, not a child at 16, I hate to break it to you, and shove him five feet and then, once he was on the ground, begin to punch him in the head repeatedly. I seen that on the video. And so, by my imagination, they would not have put the officer on leave had they thought that behavior was appropriate. Making a black man out to be an aggressor in this situation is, to me, an attempt to cast doubt and give cover to police officers that act re <laughs> Oh my god, they're going into that. Anyway, the police department said a series of events unfolded before the confronta uh, confrontation. Police were called about 11.30 Saturday in reference to a person with a gun in the parking lot of the bowling alley on Ambassador. When officer arrived, they could not find a person who matched the 911 caller's description, so they left the scene. About 20 to 30 minutes later, officers were conducting an unrelated traffic stop in the same parking lot when the officers identified a suspect based on a description from the 911 call. At that point, officers approached the teen, who is not the same person shown in the Facebook video, and patted him down for a weapon. Griffin said the teen did not have a weapon on him and was cooperative during the interaction. While that unfolded, a relative of the teen allegedly approached the officers. Uh, quote, I believe it turned physical because he may have approached the officers and got into their personal spaces. So again, there's a lot more you know, to it that we don't know. But from what I've seen, I know why people get pissed. Problem is, man, they never show white boys getting their ass kicked by cops. Uh, Gilbert police officer accused of changing arrest records by David Baker out of the ArizonaFamily.com. Officer Steve Gilbert and a canine king, I love those canines, man, uh, is a Belgian Malinois imported from Croatia by way of the Eastern Holland in January of 2019. During his first year and a half, King distinguished himself in a Dutch dog sport called KNPV, which is roughly uh, translated as a Royal Dutch Police Dog. That's a little background on that. Uh, now, let's see here. Uh, a Gilbert police officer is facing a couple of felonies after investigators said he changed key information on two documents for an arrest. Officer Steve Gilbert had arrested a man on May 8th in Apache Junction in Pinell County for two outstanding felony warrants. Before he could be booked into jail, he has to appear before a Pinell County judge. However, Gilbert changed the arrest location to the Gilbert Police Department, which is in Maricopa County, on the Gilbert Police Arrest Booking Module in the Maricopa County form, uh, uh, what is that, six, a legal document that includes probable cause to book a suspect. Investigators said Gilbert did this so he wouldn't have to book the suspect at a detention center in Pinell County. Despite lying on legal documents, intake staff at the Maricopa County 4th Avenue Jail still wouldn't accept the suspect because he needed to see a Pinell County judge. As a result, the suspect was released. Officer Gilbert was arrested on July 15th on charges of false swearing and tampering with a public record. Prosecutors filed charges against Officer Gilbert on the 23rd. That is your Corey Graff's Wall of Shame, man. Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Check me out over on Instagram at Insane Throttle Biker News and join in on the discussion over on our YouTube channel at Insane Throttle Biker News Radio Show. Alright, welcome back to the show. My final thoughts. 
You know, as I was watching that one video, something came to mind. Camelia Harris, she's running for vice president under that uh, empty vessel. By the way, you vote for Biden, that's who you're voting for for president is Camelia Harris, that uh, crazy lunatic uh, left-wing idiot out of California. Anyway, she goes up to Wisconsin, goes and talks to this dude that started it all, you know, the guy who got in in the back seven times, and says he was a very brave soul. It always surprises me. See, the Democrats are always on the wrong side of the issue every damn time, even, you know, the empty vessel who for 47 years has been on the wrong side of history every damn time. This is the guy who said, you know, you shouldn't go after that terrorist that uh, masterminded nine eleven. But anyway, he was a hero. You just said this dude was a hero and he was wanted on a felony sexual assault warrant. You're kidding, right? Well, what am I saying? What, 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 what am I saying? She can't, comes from the same state that they just lowered penalties for sexual offenders. So what am I saying? I should have known better, right? She actually said this, a vice president candidate, and it infuriates me that the media doesn't call it like it is. Here's a guy who was wanted on a felony sexual assault warrant and this is why it happened. He had a knife in his hand. You just see him reaching in the car. He was stoned. Everybody knows don't do that. Maybe he was after money. I don't know. His GoFundMe page is pretty big. So was that Floyd. The guy who, you know, if you watch the whole video, that's why you don't hear about him anymore. You don't hear about him. Because that night he would have died anyway from an overdose. He had that much fentanyl in his system. So it always amazes me how the left embraced these type of people but it's falling apart on them now that's why you actually see this dude get out of his basement for once and go campaigning even though he's not there half the time do you guys even understand what he's saying half the time it's like man hooked on phonics give this thing uh this dude i actually feel sorry for the you know if you hated the president that much why would you run an empty vessel like him against them now people in the suburbs are saying you know what enough's enough of that because it started to hit their uh their home and they don't like all the riots no they don't like him they especially don't like uh somebody saying well we're gonna expand section eight housing and all that into your neighborhood well suburbanites don't like that stuff most of them left the cities I know around uh, the city of Chicago, the outskirts of Cook County, DuPage County, Kane County, they don't want that crap there. They're always, always taking the side of the wrong people. Now, what happened in that video, this kid was messed up. If you were on the radio, come over to YouTube and all that to see it. The cop was punching him. And, again, I don't know what the rest of the video is like, but it didn't need to happen that route, man. There's a bunch of officers. Just freaking armbar them and put them in the freaking cuffs. You didn't have to get all stupid with them. And, you know, that's going to get out, and there's going to be more riots. It's like, man, is anybody even tired of that now? I know a lot of people are because support for BLM is now at 12%. Yes, I said it, 12%. People are tired of it. And now you got, uh, I don't know if it was political or one of those others, claiming that if Biden don't get elected, there's going to be more violence in this country than ever before. So you're basically trying to blackmail the American people to vote the way you want. I hate it where these people live in a little bubble. They live in a little bubble. They don't think that Americans actually know what the hell they're doing. They're going to do everything and anything to cheat. So you better be ready for this election. You know, Trump could win on the third and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you're going to see ballots start coming in from this mail-in uh, 
voter crap, this scheme. And then there's going to be lawsuits upon lawsuits going to get to the state Supreme Court. And people are saying that Roberts is the one that's going to decide the election because, you know, they got the nine on the Supreme Court. And Roberts don't like Trump, and he's been ruling against conservatives because he don't want the pressure from the media. One person is going to decide this election. Now, personally, if you can go out and protest and everybody says this, you can go vote. But if you live in Chicago, and we understand the Democrats big time in Chicago, we know all the fraud they push, we know all the lies they push, they're going to do everything and anything they can to get in power. Anything. You're going to see it for yourselves come November 3rd. They're already the nerve of these people, and many people might not agree with it taking a vaccine but now they're saying don't trust the vaccine why because if there's a vaccine out there ooh, trump did something good sad stuff man sad state of affairs this country's in but swinging back on that police brutality why don't they ever show a white man being freaking beat on by cops it happens more then the blacks get him beat on. It's a statistical fact. Look it up. More whites are killed by cops than blacks. But it doesn't meet the MSM or mainstream media's viewpoint. It's not their agenda. So we can't put that out. That's how bad the media has been. They had a chance to question this freaking empty vessel, and they threw them softball questions. Personally, I can't wait for the debate, man. And I hate to be political, but I can't wait for this debate. He's going to get steamrolled, if you ask me. And that's going to show this country exactly what they're about to vote for. Bikers, especially bikers in this cycle, have been freaking lied about, blamed for stuff that they didn't do. Why? Because bikers for Trump, everybody, they think everybody that's a biker is a biker for Trump, and that's not the case. But now they're making bikers out to be the bad guy. Do you notice all the press before Sturgis, how it was going to be a petri dish of nothing but disease? Of the COVID coming out. So far we only heard about one death. One death out of 460,000 people that attended that. Then I looked at the worldwide figures. And it's like, wait a second, man. That's under a 0.1%, man. Why'd they lock this down? Why'd they lock everything down? If you cannot see the conspiracy in that, I don't know what to tell you, man. Don't become sheep. It's This is the most important time, I believe, in our history other than the Civil War. We got agitators out there that does do not like this country. And stop saying democracy. We are not a democracy. We're a republic where the minority gets equal rights. A democracy, it's by majority. Learn your civics. Learn your history. Learn the damn Constitution, for Christ's sakes. We are not a democracy. There's some bad plans coming, man. Bad plans if they get involved and win. They were, they're going to avoid uh, appoint 15 judges to the Supreme Court. They're going to change it around so they'll get six. Your gun rights are gone. It's going to be a totalitarian uh, you know, type of country. So, I don't care how bad you hate this guy in office, you better vote for him or you're going to see your uh, freedoms go right out the freaking door. Personally, I like to have a biker party because, you know, us, when we get together and vote, we kick ass, baby. Anyway, uh, actually, you're, you know, with the story of in Australia, they got, the, 
that Task Force Raptor, Task Force Maximus, you want to see dictatorship over your rights, just look over in Australia. That's what the kind of stuff we're going to face here in the United States if these people get in power. And I'm sure our friends up in Canada, over in England, Australia, New Zealand, they're going to tell you the same, man. Don't give up your rights. Fight for them. They've lived under these leftist ideology BS politicians. They know firsthand Australia, they gave up their guns in the mid-90s. Are you crazy? Now, uh, uh, that's another question I had for him. How do you go out in the back, you know, what do they call it? Uh, you know, whatever it is, the, the back woods or whatever. <laughs> I have to watch Crocodile Dundee to figure that. The Outback. The Outback. Do you sh how can you, you know, protect yourself without a gun out there, man? Can you have a shotgun at least or a rifle? Something? But they gave up their rights. I hope the God bikers stand up to this. Bikers are really the last line of defense if you think about it. That and the militias and other groups. Because I think that's where it's going right now. But how can a Democratic politician sit there in front of a freaking the guy who's wanted on a sexual assault warrant and say you're a hero? No, he's medieval. You should go medieval on him right in the middle of uh, Main Street. That's how sick you people are. My God. Uh, anyway, don't forget to uh, go over to YouTube on our other channel. Listen to the Hollywood and China Doll show. We got that up there, and I, you know what? We're getting a lot of good response. We cover all kinds of topics. It's not a biker channel, and we get real in depth with a lot of good conversation. And like the promo says, no topics are too controversial for us, man. We're gonna hit it. Give you. We're gonna be one hundred percent real, one hundred percent honest. So with that, don't forget Instagram, man. Help me get over there, man. Get that freaking ten thousand. You know I love you for it if you do. Uh, I'll talk to you guys uh, later, man. Get your copy of New Age of Biden and Brotherhood by Insane Throttle's very own James Hollywood Bachgarden. New Age of Biking and Brotherhood will take you on a journey of the past and present bikers. Get your copy on Amazon and all major book retailers. Rock on. <laughs>you want to know how to support the show go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing we got rock on hats rock on shirts the rock on hats are embroidered get your exclusive merchandise now rock on don't forget to go over to harleyliberty.com get all your motorcycle club news what's happening in the scene we have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all the baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BaggerSyndicateCycles.com. The show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. 
Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is Jay Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock